Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Ali Umair, and I am from University of Florence, research fellow. I am here to present the experimental characterization of a new software-defined radios-based DSP stage for our VLC systems. Basically, my group is uh, based on uh, myself, Micro, uh, Marco Mucci, and Jacopo Catani, who are the senior researchers in Italian Research Council and Italian Institute of Optics. So our group is working on the physical systems of uh, optical wireless communications and VLC, and we are also working on fluorescent concentrators. <coughs> so my presentation, I have divided it. First, I will uh, put some introduction, uh, why we are using it, then motivation. So what is the motivation behind designing the filtering stage or DSP stage for the VLC systems? After that, I will discuss the system architecture. So what is the system architecture and how many systems we are going to compare in this presentation. Then the STR, what is the STR doing and what is the filtering stage and what are the stages in the filtering stage and how it is working. Then I will uh, discuss the results and uh, put some discussion on the results. So uh, we know that uh, RF technology is facing congestion right now and millions of uh, hundreds of uh, nodes are uh, going to join the wireless uh, systems as uh, Honorable Professor Herald have already uh, put uh, a lot of uh, uh, light on uh, the problems we are facing and what is the importance of the optical wireless communication systems. Uh, just to uh, summarize, uh, that we are just uh, one step behind the deployment, the real-time deployment of uh, the VLC systems. Uh, I heard in a conference from the Professor Steve that uh, for the future generation networks, uh, they have no option other than light. So we have to come into play uh, and we have to develop some new uh, hardwares uh, uh, based on the photonics, based on light and mm, for optical wireless communication systems. The potential applications like indoor, outdoor, satellite to satellite, ground to satellite and underwater uh, optical wireless communications. So, so the motivation behind uh, the designing the receiver side and designing the filtering stage uh, uh, on the receiver side is that the receiver should be the robust and should filter out the ambient noise very efficiently. And the receiver should also uh, relax the misalignment issues. That's why we are working also on the floats and concentrators and uh, improving their bandwidths. The system should be low cost, the robust, that it should work in all kind of situations, indoor, outdoor, and it shouldn't block the light. And uh, so the noise is coming into play, the system, from the two uh, sources, which, uh, which one is uh, the artificial light sources. We have already implemented the LEDs in the building infrastructure, in the, on the roads, on the uh, traffic signals, in the car lights also. And there is the natural light source, which is uh, the light coming from the sun, stars, and the other objects. So we have to filter out uh, the ambient uh, light or these uh, noise photons coming from the different light sources. So uh, this is uh, the system architecture we are working on uh, here uh, uh, in the figure 1A and B. I have uh, shown the real uh, modules which we are working in our lab. This is the encoder. Uh, the Arduino-based uh, encoder, which is uh, encoding the bits in packets. Uh, the packet is comprised of uh, the synchronization bits and then the payload. And uh, then these bits are uh, uh, sent to the modulator, uh, current modulator, which is uh, providing AC and DC to turn on the light sources. In this case, uh, the light source is uh, low power white LED automotive light. So we have done this experiment uh, with a very low power white LED. Then there is on the receiver side, we are using a photo detector PDA 100A2. And uh, on the top of the photo detector, there is a condensed lens, uh, which is uh, uh, to uh, decrease the field of view and to get uh, the more optical signal. Then there is a software defined radius coming to play. So based on these three configurations, this STR may or may not be activated. So uh, I will uh, discuss the comparison between these three configurations, what they are using and how they are working and what is the benefit. And then there is a uh, decoder side. First, it, is a, it gets the signal from the software-defined radios or directly from the photodiode. 
it digitizes that signal and then uh, the decoder based on the Arduino controller uh, calculates the packet error rate. So on, from the transmitter side, we are generating 10 days to power of five uh, uh, number of packets each time, sending each time. And uh, based and uh, this uh, decoder, which is also Arduino based, it is calculating the packet error rate. So based on this real module, this is the block diagrams in which we are, uh, there are three configurations we are using. Uh, first is the direct Arduino receiver. So in this configuration, there is no software defined radios involved. There is no filtering state. So uh, uh, then there is a second configuration in which we are using SDR as a bridge. So the bridge system is invented, uh, the term is invented by us because uh, in this system, the bridge uh, in uh, software defined radios is just getting the signal from the photodiode and replicating the same signal at the output. So this configuration was involved uh, just to study how much noise is being introduced by the SDR and how much noise they are, uh, the electronics of uh, the USRP is coming into play. Then there is a third configuration in which we have integrated all the filtering stage inside our uh, uh, Arduino based receiver and uh, then we filter out the noise. So, uh, so the filtering stage uh, is uh, comprised of three more stages in which first there is a DC block, then there is an automatic gain control, and then there is a low pass filter. So the DC block, uh, uh, so these filtering stages are designed in GNU radio. We, we have used the open source GNU radio software to control the USRP uh, and to design the filtering stage. So the DC block uh, works on the algorithm of uh, moving average filters. So each time it takes, uh, based on its uh, length, uh, DC block length, it takes the number of samples, uh, take the average of those samples and subtract from the incoming optical signal. And then there is an automatic gain control because uh, due to number of factors, uh, the optical signal is changing. So to remain in a certain limit, we have used the automatic gain control. And then there is a low pass filter to filter out all the low frequency noise. So uh, this is a graph, uh, uh, the comparison between the attenuation and the frequency. So the based on the DC block length, uh, the input bandwidth is analyzed. So when the length is very small, the low frequency noise is filtered out uh, or the DC is filtered out very uh, efficiently. But when the length is increased, uh, there is come into play some more, uh, some low frequency noise also. So based on uh, the baud rates at which we are working, we have to choose uh, intelligently which uh, DC block length we uh, can use. <clears throat> so here in this graph, uh, I have shown uh, the comparison between the packet error rate and the received optical signal. So there are three configurations, as I um, just told uh, that uh, there is a full system in which only Arduino based receiver is uh, involved. There is a direct, uh, then there is a bridge system in which uh, the SDR is working as only bridge. And then there is a direct Arduino system in which uh, uh, we have, there is no SDR or filtering stages involved. So these, uh, the red uh, uh, line, uh, solid line and the data points are for the full system in which the receiver or the no base receiver and the full filtering stage is involved. Then there is a, these blue and black dots and lines are replicating the uh, bridge system and the direct or the no system. So from this graph, we can conclude that uh, uh, there is a lot of improvement in terms of uh, the, opti uh, the received optical signal. We with a very low received optical signal, we can achieve the packet error rate of 10 raised to power minus five with, with the, the filtering stage inserted in. But uh, without the, this filtering stage, uh, the Arduino receiver uh, must need a very lot of, a lot of signals, which is 10 times more than this signal to get the same packet error rate. Summarizing these results in this table uh, for the packet error rate of 10 raised to power minus five, the Arduino receiver needs 13.2 uh, of the optical signal, which is in arbitrary units. Uh, same is the case with the bridge system. 
So here it is very important that uh, the USRP N210 is not introducing a noise uh, in the system. And with the, with the full system in which uh, the filtering stage is involved, we just need 1.4 of the optical signal, which is in, again in the arbitrary units. And for the packet error rate of 10 raised to the power minus 3, which is the fact limit, forward error correction limit, uh, we can say that uh, the system performance is increased by the 10 times because we need 10 times less signal with the full uh, filtering stage involved as compared to the direct Arduino system, which needs 11.3 of the optical signal. So uh, using, using the full system, which involves the filtering stage as well as the Arduino receiver, uh, we need uh, uh, the system performance is increased by 10 folds, and we need a very low optical signal uh, to get the same packet error rate. And right now, for the future uh, directions, we are trying to uh, test our uh, system directly under the sun outside. And uh, um, the day before yesterday, because yesterday I came here, we have tested the system and we have uh, reached up to nine, me nine meters directly under the sun at 1 p.m. Uh, with, with this filtering stage. And with this direct Arduino system, we have reached around 5.5 uh, meters. Um, so um, this is the advantage of this filtering stage. And uh, we are working at one megabouts on off keying. So, so this is my presentation. And uh, thank you for your patience and listening.